So I am here in the wheat field, the site of three hours of brutal fighting. This very field changed hands numerous times and it would quickly fill with the bodies of the blue and gray. And not gonna lie, it's a little bit confusing and this portion of the battle is a little intimidating for me. I don't really know a whole lot about it. But I enlisted the help of this guy. This is Aaron Smith of Forward Gettysburg and he's donated his time to us today to help us understand uh, this chaotic and crazy portion of the battlefield. He has his own channel. It's called Forward Gettysburg. The link to his channel is below in the description. Head on over there because he has some solid content about some of the portions of the Gettysburg battlefield here today. So let's see what we can learn about the bloody wheat field. James, thank you so much for having me on the channel. Like he said, I'm Aaron Smith for Forward Gettysburg and we're in the wheat field. This is probably one of the most complex portions of the Battle of Gettysburg. We're talking 26 acres of wheat. 20,000 men are gonna make their way from both the north and the south into this area. And the fighting is going to last for around three hours. So let's start at the beginning. Why are we even in the wheat field? Well, we all know about that rascal Dan Sickles. He eyed the peach orchard as this prime piece of real estate here on the southern portion of the battlefield. Originally, his line was supposed to be connecting to the left of the second corps, somewhere near the area of the Pennsylvania Monument, but he doesn't like it. He wants a good platform for his artillery. He doesn't want to be stuck in that hole. So he decides to move about three quarters of a mile forward to the peach orchard, and he inadvertently creates a salient. So we are now on that eastern portion of the salient. So the wheat field is an incredibly important position in the Union line for the Third Corps. The wheat field is going to protect that portion of the line that is resting on the Emmitsburg Road. If the Confederates are able to take this area, they will have a direct route to the rear of the Union line running there along the Emmitsburg Road um, going into Gettysburg. So let's get into the action. Hood's division of Longstreet's Corps, the first corps of the Army of Northern Virginia, probably the premier corps of that great army, they are attacking Devil's Den. They are pushing back Ward's brigade. A single brigade there is under attack by an entire division. And eventually that area is going to clear out and we're going to make, they're going to make their way into the Rose Woods. Now, the brigade posted here is under Regis de Trobriand. I'm not French, but he's French. I probably butchered that last name, but he is going to have some men posted in this area. The 17th Maine, they're gonna be posted along that stone wall there. And James showed that to you guys earlier. The 17th Maine is gonna be posted along that stone wall. And here comes Anderson's Georgians running through those woods. Those Maine boys are gonna say that that is the best stone wall they've ever found in their life. And they're going to be able to repulse the initial attacks by the Confederates. However, they realize that this area is, is a key, key facet to their position here. They're gonna send for the closest reinforcements. Those reinforcements are going to be Barnes's division of the 5th Corps of the Army of the Potomac. Now the 5th Corps, they just made their way from Hanover, my hometown, got a shout out to the snack town capital of the world. Um, but the 5th Corps, they're gonna be posted over at Powers Hill, which is going to be an area just over, we're looking at Munchauer's Knoll, it's gonna be just over Munchauer's Knoll over in that direction. They're gonna be making their way from that area. Now, the lead brigade 
of Barnes's division. The lead brigade is going to be the brigade under Strong Vincent. We know that Strong Vincent is called to the defense of Little Round Top. And we get into the 20th Maine and all of those regiments there, and they make their ways into the halls of American history. But the other two brigades, Tilton and Schweitzer, they're going to come to this area and they're going to reinforce this position. So Tilton and Schweitzer, they're going to take positions on the Stony Hill, this area directly behind me. Guess why they call it the Stony Hill? If you guess there's stones there, <laughs> you're spot on. We're not very creative here at Gettysburg when we name our things, but they're going to make their position here to the Stony Hill. And now from the south there in the wheat field, we have Robert, elements of Robertson's Texans Brigade, the 3rd Arkansas, some other Texan regiments. They're going to make their way through those woods. Anderson's Georgians have also regrouped and they're going to attack again. And they're pounding away at the 17th Maine. They're starting to attack elements here of Tilton and Schweitzer's Brigade. And here we have Winslow's Battery, six 12 pound bronze Napoleon guns, and they are firing away into these woods, pounding away at the Confederates, unleashing all kinds of shot and shell to fight back these attackers. And they initially will be successful. After this attack is repulsed, there's going to be a little bit of a lull in the action. Now, if we've studied Longstreet's attack on the second day here on the southern portion of the battlefield, we know he's going to unleash his attack in echelon. And echelon is one of those great French terms that the United States military adopted at that time. The United States military loved the French. They loved Napoleon. He was the foundation of all of their military tactics during the Civil War, in eight, in, especially in 1863, before we got into the... Uh, proliferation of trench warfare. Um, let me get off my tangent here and get back to the action. But Longstreet's attack is launching off an echelon. An echelon essentially means one portion of that attack is going to attack the defenders portion of their line. And then another portion of the attack is going to attack. The idea is, is that the defenders are going to be reinforcing and, and moving units around to stop these attacks. And eventually the attackers are going to find a weak point and break through. So the next portion of Longstreet's and Echelon attack is going to be Kershaw's Brigade of South Carolinians. And Kershaw's Brigade is going to make their way from this direction toward the Stony Hill. And Kershaw and Longstreet, they're going to be posted on the Rose Farm just through the woods over here. And in one of the most confusing, baffling orders of the American Civil War and especially the Battle of Gettysburg, Longstreet is going to advise Kershaw to split his brigade into two. Three regiments are going to make their way toward the south, towards Stony Hill, which is right off to my right. The other three regiments are going to make their way toward the Wheatfield Road, just over here. Now, the thing about the Wheatfield Road at this point is that it has a line of nearly five Union batteries. We're talking 30 to 32 guns. So they're going to make their way towards these guns. Perhaps they think they can capture them. Perhaps they think they can take those guns and turn them on the enemy and maybe even hit the Emmitsburg Road from the rear. But it's not going to work. They're going to make a wheel right maneuver. And through that maneuver, they're going to expose their left flank to a hellacious fire of Union canister and case shot, and it's going to absolutely deplete and destroy the ranks of those three regiments in Kershaw's brigade. Now, however, we have to realize that Tilton is still up here. Tilton and Schweitzer, they're in the Stony Hill. They're posted in this area. So when they realize that Kershaw split his brigade into two, and part of that brigade is making for their rear, they're going to get kind of alarmed. That's kind of a big deal. They don't want to be shot in the rear. Who does, you know? So they're going to send to Barnes and ask them for advice. What should we do? Should we hold this position? There are enemy troops headed for our rear. Barnes is going to tell them, if you feel the position is untenable, you have permission to withdraw. So Tilton is going to pull his troops back and Schweitzer will begin to do the same because as Tilton pulls back, now Schweitzer's flank is vulnerable and Schweitzer is going to pull back as well. Now, as they pull back, there are going to be reinforcements coming from the 2nd Corps. We are going to have Caldwell's division. 
that is going to consist of Kelly, Cross, Zook, and Brook. One of my favorite little ditties of the American Civil War. Kelly, Cross, Zook, Brook. Just flows off the tongue. They're going to make their way. And as the story goes, Zook's brigade is going to encounter Tilton's brigade. Tilton's men, they're headed for the rear. They're panicked at this point. Zook being very much a, a hard disciplinarian type of general, he is going to look at Tilton's men and say, if you cannot get out of the way, lay down and we will march over you. And according to some sources, they do exactly that. I always try and put myself in the shoes of the soldiers who fought here. You know, so imagine you're a Union soldier in Caldwell's division. We're making our way into the wheat fields. The soldiers in De Trobriand's brigade who have been fighting here already, they're pulling back. You see the bodies littering this field that was once full of wheat. Now it's littered with blue Union uniforms. And just try and get a, a sense of what is going on here. You know, think about what the soldiers are thinking. We're coming in, we're under heavy fire, no doubt. We got Confederates all along this portion here and we're charging right into the teeth of the enemy. It's really hard to imagine. monument to the famed Irish Brigade. At this point, the Irish Brigade had around 450, 500 men within their ranks. Their ranks had been extremely depleted. They suffered heavy casualties at Fredericksburg. The Irish Brigade, they're actually going to be the second regiment to hit the Stony Hill wheat field area from Caldwell's second Corps division. The first one is going to be Cross. So the Irish Brigade, they're going to take positions here at the Stony Hill, and they're going to be engaged very heavily with Kershaw's South Carolinians. Now the Irish Brigade, they have a distinct advantage to the weaponry they're using. The legendary Sons of Aaron, they're going to use the 1842 model Springfield. This is a 69 caliber musket, smooth bore, so there's no rifling they're going to use a buck and ball ammunition configuration. Now, it's not great for distancing. You're not gonna be able to snipe someone 400 yards away using buck and ball. But here in the thick woods of Stony Hill, it is perfect. And they're going to use it to their advantage in a devastating manner. They're going to fight back Kershaw's three regiments that have made their way to the south here to attack Stony Ridge. So behind me is the Stony Hill, the Irish Brigade. They are fighting off Kershaw's regiments. Meanwhile, the next portion of Longstreet's attack is launching off. We have Barksdale and Wofford's Brigade, and Barksdale is going to hit that salient at the Peach Orchard. And his right flank is going to start to make its way toward that Stony Hill area, his very far right flank. So these guys are fighting over here. By this point, the 17th Maine and those guys, they have fallen back. The wheat, the wheat field has gone back and forth several times. Charges, counter charges in the wheat field proper. A very bloody affair is happening here just south of Gettysburg. Again, this position is so key because directly up there is the line on the Emmitsburg Road, right up there where the rest of Sickles Third Corps is resting. If they lose this position, they lose everything. So we are facing the wheat field now. And what I wanna try and show you is just how much the terrain changes in this general area. So you have Winslow's battery there. That's kind of some high ground, smack dab in the middle of the wheat field here. And here you have Stony Hill. And just before Stony Hill, it kind of drops off right here. Now, you have no idea what's happening on the other side of Stony Hill here. The peach orchard's on the other side. You can hear it. You can probably hear the rattle of the guns, the musketry, the cannon, the screams of the wounded, but you have no idea who holds that position. And you had Union troops coming in through Stony Hill here. That's very rugged and rough terrain to try and advance through with your linear formations. But you kind of see the low point here. And then we're continuing in this direction. And 
it's very rocky. You have trees, of course the wheat field here. It's just, I really hope the camera is doing justice. Now, you can kind of see that car in the uh, foreground there, how it rises up. So again, the terrain is not flat and that is some high ground. So whoever holds the high ground here probably has a pretty good shot at forces here. So I really hope the camera is picking that up. So as the fighting is going on, the second core brigades, they have pretty much stabilized this area. Then Brooke is going to make a charge into the woods. He gets a little confident. He says, hey, we're doing really good. Let's drive these revs out of here. So they're going to drive into the woods, but he's going to be met by Sems, and Sems is going to be able to fight that attack back. So Brooks is going to fall back here, and they're going to take, again, positions in the wheat field. Now, like I said, just over in this direction, we have Barksdale and Walford. They are making their faded attack just through these woods. And one of the important things I want to tell you guys, and I should have mentioned it earlier, is when you're out here in the wheat field, there's an overwhelming sense of isolation. You can see what's happening here. You can tell what's going on, but you can't tell what's going on on the other side of those rose woods. You can't tell what's going on on the other side of that stone hill. So there's an overwhelming sense of isolation within these 26 acres of wheat. So here we are back in the wheat field proper. Now we had the fighting going on here with the Irish Brigade, those second corps brigades. The fighting is going on, but the Confederates, they're going to regroup for another attack. We have Kershaw again coming in from there. He's regrouped those three regiments to the north that took that hellacious cannon fire from those Union guns there along Wheatfield Road. He has regrouped them for another attack. They're making their way towards Stony Hill. Barksdale has smashed the Peach Orchard with his Mississippians, and behind Barksdale brigade we have Wofford's brigade of Georgians. Wofford is making his way with his brigade toward the Stony Hill. So now we start to see an envelopment occur. We're going to have Benning. We're going to have Sems. Sems has finally decided to wake up and join the fight here. He's going to come through the woods. We have Anderson's troops. We have those elements of Robertson's troops. They're going to make their way toward the wheat field here. And kind of like I was describing the James earlier, if the Union troops here were your Rice Krispies, the Confederates are going to be your bowl and they're going to surround them. So the troops over here on the Stony Hill, they're going to be ordered back. Switzer's Brigade, again, who had already put in a tremendous amount of work on the Stony Hill earlier in the day, they're going to be ordered here to the field to help fend off the Confederate attack. As this is going on, the U.S. regulars under Ayers, they're going to take positions along this line of trees directly behind me. And they're going to take a position there. And Burbank's U.S. regular brigade, they're going to make their way into the wheat field. And they're going to do this glorious sweeping motion through the wheat field. But by the time they come around and their right flank comes around, there are Confederate troops on the Stony Hill. And just just like Kershaw exposed his left flank to those Union guns on the Wheatfield Road, Burbank is going to expose his right flank to the Confederate musket and rifle fire that is now on the Stony Hill area. And they're going to be driven back from the wheat field. The Confederates, they're going to hold this position at the end of the day. Schweitzer's brigade and Burbank's brigade, they're going to suffer the heaviest casualties of the fighting here in the wheat field, nearly 50% casualties for both brigades. Eventually, the Confederates are gonna drive through this area, they're gonna drive through the Rose Woods, and then they're gonna be stopped by that last remaining division of Sykes's Fifth Corps, the Pennsylvania Reserves. And the Pennsylvania Reserves are going to save the day there along that Plum Run Valley. But the Confederates will hold the wheat field. So why care about the wheat field? A lot of visitors to Gettysburg, they wanna check out the newly renovated Devil's Den. They want to look at Little Round Top, even though, they, even though they can't go there yet. They want to look at it. Cool, Little Round Top, the 20th Main. Great. They're going to go check out Pickett's Charge, the Angle. They're going to go check out Confederate Avenue and Seminary Ridge. And sadly, the wheat field is forgotten. 
but it shouldn't be. Six Confederate brigades, 10 Union brigades, 20,000 men fought in this confined, isolated area of 26 acres. Of those 20,000 men, 6,000 of them will be killed, wounded, or captured. For reference, the population of Gettysburg in 1863 was around 2,500. Nearly two and a half times the population of Gettysburg will suffer life-changing injuries, wounds, or perhaps give the final last measure of devotion here in the wheat field. This area should not be forgotten. This is not just a drive-by as you come off of Devil's Den or on your way down to Little Round Top. No, the wheat field, the sacrifice here in this area should be venerated, celebrated, and remembered just as much as any other place in the Gettysburg National Military Park. Thank you.